I'm joined today by Gene Edwards, author of A Tale of Three Kings, The Divine Romance, and The Prisoner in the Third Cell, to talk about his newest book. Hi, Gene. Great to be with you. And my privilege. You begin your book by stating that while you were a Christian, you're also a proven failure in the most widely accepted practices that are said to produce a spiritual person. Why do you so readily confess to being a spiritual failure? Well, of course, the truth is the truth. Uh, there are people, and I envy them all, uh, they see God in a sunset or in a sunrise. They're always talking about the Lord and how wonderful He is, and uh, just seem to find it really easy to to walk with the Lord and be spiritual. And I never fell into that category. I'm the very opposite. I am a doer, which means when I wake up in the morning, I am not there to touch the Lord. I am there to serve Him. The first time I wake up, I've got to get out of bed and I've got to go to work and start serving God. And that's the kind of life that I lived for a very long time. That's number one. Number two is I actually probably fall in a, a very broad category. There are a lot of Christians who never have been able to get a handle on a spiritual life or a, any kind of spiritual relationship with the Lord. You know, we have a lot of people out there are still just really enjoying the fact they got saved and how wonderful it is. And I, I speak for myself again, uh, but never uh, getting to know the Lord much beyond their salvation. And yet there's so much more to the Lord than that, much, much more. And most of us don't ever have any handles. We hear an awful lot of discussion about what we should be. It doesn't work for me. I, it just doesn't work. I needed to find some something more workable for a fellow who does not is not spiritually inclined. So here I am. I'm a man that is a Christian who is not spiritually inclined. Help me. That was basically the cry of my life. Now you also mentioned that by nature you're a doer, an achiever, a hard worker, a person who gets results. Now, for most of us, that'd be something to highlight on a resume, but you say it can be detrimental to having a constant living fellowship with God. Why is that? You know, there came a point in my life when I really realized, being an American, we are by nature doers. That's how Americans are classified. They go out and get it done. And though I had a spectacular conversion to the Lord, my father was a doer, I'm a doer, and one day I woke up to the fact that God was not my God, and I hope you can understand this, but that serving God was really my God. Now that hit me really hard, that... Uh, Although I love him, the thing that I was really doing was not knowing him, but serving him, working for him, getting the job done, going out and making sure the kingdom was brought in. I think an awful lot of us who are doers have that same problem. We find it natural to us to serve him, and yet... Quite frankly, I don't think most of us, and I think the doers are the worst of us, I don't think most of us were ever given in our Christian life very much practical help on how to tell, walk with the Lord day, day by day. So in that respect, the book is a, a confessional of a doer who was ignorant and couldn't seem to find anybody else who would deliver him from his ignorance. So one thing that had to happen in me was something was going to have to break. I was going to have to stop being just somebody who served him and figure out some way to get to know him a little bit better. So that's really what the book is about, is about a, a doer who couldn't do anything but just serve God 
and let get to know him very well. Now, Gene, you write in years past that you would come home from work and realize that you had not thought about God since your morning devotions. How widespread do you believe this type of practical atheism is among believers? Okay, and I think I coined that term, so I better explain it, hadn't I? Uh, We're Christians, we believe in the Lord, we serve Him, we rejoice in Him, and then the good part of the day, we forget about Him. How widespread is that? Well, I'll tell you what my secretary said. She said, uh, it never occurred to me to start thinking, turning to the Lord during the day, maybe to think about him, but never to turn to him. I think I'm going to make a, I'm going to make a stab. You ask, so I'll, I'll make a guess. I would say after Christians, if those who do spend time with the Lord in the morning, probably don't think about him again in most days until they get home and get back into their Christian surroundings. But out there in that awful workplace, we usually don't spend much time thinking about it. There was a recent survey made, uh, actually it was about 10 years ago, uh, the, a poll went out uh, saying, we won't use your name, so please tell the truth. To ministers, how much time a day do you spend in prayer? And they came out in about 10 minutes. I would like to question that. I would like to say that it's probably for ministers, most of us, in our own personal life, not praying for other people or public prayer, three minutes. Or at least let Gene Edwards talk, step to the front and say, that would have been typical of me. So uh, I would say, to answer your question, I think most of us Christians talk a lot about the Lord. We go to church and hear wonderful things about Him. But as far as a personal, spiritual walk with Him of any kind, I'm going to say at least 51% of us don't have that. And I have to tell you that I, I really believe one reason for that is no one ever gave us any practical help. And that's certainly been true of my life. Now, in your new book, you challenge the effectiveness of the common approach to drawing near to God, which is to just pray and read your Bible. What would you say is the major weakness in this approach? Okay, you know, those are almost fighting words to me. Uh, How many ministers I've known in my life, and I've known a lot more than most men have known because, well, it doesn't matter. Uh divorcees come in and they're about to break up and the minister says, honest to goodness, his his, uh, his words to him is, pray and read your Bible. You know, just go home and pray and read your Bible. Well, let's talk about prayer. Uh, most Christians, three, four, five minutes, they have completely run out of anything to say. I've asked this question publicly before large bodies of people. How long do you pray, not asking for things, but just talking to the Lord? How long do you, does your prayer last before you learn out of anything to say? And then I start with 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 4 minutes, and most of it, again, comes to 3 or 4 minutes. Most people don't know what to say after a certain time. The other thing is, and I have been amazed at this, Most Christians think spending time with the Lord is to ask Him for things. And when they get through asking, there's nothing to do after that but say amen. I'm not talking about I'd like to have a a new red wagon for Christmas, but, you know, Lord, I I help you, uh, ask you, please take care of the president and take care of the governor and my family and the missionaries in Africa. And when they finish the request, literally don't know anything else to say to the Lord. Now, that's prayer. Bible, it's even worse. Um, I'm really going to get out here and just solve on this. Uh, the King James Bible is most what most of us read. Uh, it was uh, published in 1611, and I'm going to tell you something you probably don't know. 
It was called Elizabethan English, or King James English, or Shakespearean English. And that language died out in the year 1670. So that language has not been around for after the first 60 years. So that when we pick up our New Testament, our old, reading the King James, we're actually reading a dead language that died out before 1700. Now yet this is the year 2000 plus. So one thing is that uh, it's very difficult to read it. The second reason is that uh, most of us don't have a clear introduction. Let's say you read Galatians, where you're reading it, but you don't know where it came from, what caused that book to be written. Therefore, again, I have asked this question of Christians. Is this not the major way of getting our spiritual life? I'm in the book of Galatians. I have a pen. Most of it, I don't understand what it's saying, and then I find something wonderful, and I underline it, and I say, praise the Lord, that's wonderful. Then I go on, and later I underline another one. That's two sentences in a chapter. The rest I don't understand. The realities of what that book said is usually left to no more than underlining a few wonderful verses. So here I have weighed in and say to you that... Both are rather wanting. Well, we've got to find something better than this. And I think there's something much better. Now, finally today, Gene, in place of a set period for prayer and Bible reading, you've explored a number of other spiritual practices that keep you in fellowship with God throughout the day and night. What are two or three that you gravitate to the most? I appreciate you asking that. Uh, One above and beyond all else is when I first wake up. A lot of people spend time with the Lord after they get up, you know, brush their teeth, comb their hair, and get their clothes on. I'm still flat on my back in my first waking moments. Of course, this has been going on a long time, but my challenge is to what is the earliest possible moment of consciousness that I can turn to the Lord. It's while I'm still in bed and I utter his name and I tell him I love him. And I do that two or three or four times. It's very quiet, very peaceful, and it has as little as that is. What a way to begin a day. I do one other thing. Most of the time, sometimes I'm just happy to be telling him I love him, taking a deep breath and uttering his name, but sometimes I surrender the day. Lord, it doesn't matter what someone says today, what they do, what they write, what kind of mess I'm in, either at the job or wherever I may be. This day is yours and everything that's in it belongs to you, and I yield to this day. The most meaningful thing in all my life is and has been from the beginning. Those first 10, 15 seconds, first four minutes, five minutes, when I simply turn my thoughts to him, slowly, quietly call on his name, and tell him I love him. It changes my whole day. Gene Edwards has been my guest today. He's the author of A Tale of Three Kings, The Divine Romance, and The Prisoner in the Third Cell. Gene, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for giving me this moment to uh, tell you a little bit about the book and a little bit about my own life. I hope the others hear this, and with all my heart, I hope they will, if nothing else, try that first four or five minutes in the morning. And- 